Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise this morning, hallelujah. I mean that, friends. Hallelujah. Jesus is on the throne, reigns supreme, and life is good in the spirit. Well, I trust that this finds you with a hallelujah on your heart this morning as well. Now, today is October 24th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, we're continuing our look into the life of Job through the book of Job, and today we are in chapter 21, where Job is going to reply again with the same message. You know, Job seems to be really hung up on the fact that the righteous suffer and the wicked prosper. And we see this in verse 7 of chapter 21 when he says, Wherefore do the wicked live? They become old, yea, they're mighty in power. And yet in verse 19 he says, But God lays up his iniquity, or in the Hebrew his troubles, his sorrows, for his children. And so because Job is in this time of suffering, yet he looks around him and sees all those involved in pagan worship who seem to be succeeding in life, he's caught in this perplexing question. Why is this? And we've addressed this many times, but the crux of the matter comes down to this. This is the only heaven that the sinful will ever see. So life on earth is good for them. And this is the only hell that the righteous shall see. So life on earth is a time of suffering for them. However, let's back up just a moment because let's remember what also the Bible tells us, that you reap what you sow. Now, if you make success, power, fame, fortune, if you make these things your God, and that's your goal in life from the moment that you wake up till the moment you go to sleep, well, you're going to reap what you sow. So the harder you work, the more you'll receive. Now, this is simply a spiritual law, just like physical laws, the law of gravity. doesn't matter if you believe in it or not. It's going to work for you or against you, depending on how you use it. And it's the same way with the spiritual laws. One of the spiritual laws is you reap what you sow. The more you invest in something, the more you're going to get out of it. And the reason it seems that the wicked prosper is because the God of their life is the pursuit of of their happiness. But as the people of God, our happiness isn't important. Others' happiness is what is important. So the harder we work, the more we give back unto God and to others. You see, if you want to be rich in this life, you have to hoard much and give little. But if you want to be righteous in this life, you give much and hoard little. Now, there are other principles at work here as well, and it's kind of hard to get our mind around it. It's even hard for me to explain it to you. Because, for instance, there are those who are just lazy and unwilling to work, and therefore they will always remain what we would consider poor. But if you really want to have a lot of money in the bank or a lot of things in your house, and that is your God, that is your pursuit in life, then you can obtain those things, but you have to be willing to pay a higher price than others. For instance, others may work 40 hours a week and enjoy their life. They're comfortable in that. They have enough to pay their bills. They have enough to give to God and to others. And they're content in that because they understand that their job and the pursuit of the things that it will help them acquire is not their reason for living. Whereas if you were to talk to someone who is financially successful, they may be working two jobs, three jobs, 70, 80, 100 hours a week. And they have no life outside their pursuit of happiness or what they think brings them happiness, money and possessions. But it's not like that for the righteous. The righteous realize that a job is the means to an end and what I mean by that is it helps them pay their most basic of needs and the free time that they have is given to things that are more important. Worship, 
study of the word, relating and socializing with family and friends, telling them of the good things of God, prayer and meditation, and on and on the list goes. But Job, because he is in this moment of suffering, is focused upon that suffering and finds himself uneasy by seeing the wicked prosper. Yet, as he says again in verse 19, God lays up his troubles and sorrows for his children. And we know the reason for that is because we grow through our problems. We grow through our troubles. Remember Romans chapter 5 and verse 3? We glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation, problems, sorrows, work patience. And because of patience, experience will follow. After experience will come hope. And hope does not make a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So we are shaped and molded into the image of the man or woman that God wants us to be because of the problems, the trials, the tribulations, and the suffering that we face in this life. And we all know that to be true as we look back on times of suffering, and yet we see that we are better for it. But in this chapter, Job also states in verse 30, for instance, that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They will be brought forth to the day of wrath. So although they live such a prosperous life in this life, there's coming a day where they will stand before the Almighty and they will give account for the lives that they've lived. And he explains the reason for that in verses 14 and 15. The wicked say unto God, depart from us. You are not our God. We do not desire the knowledge of your ways. Why? Because his ways are so opposite of their pursuits. And they want to be left alone so they can pursue whatever they think it is that will bring them happiness. It says in verse 15, what is the Almighty? Why should we serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Friends, I wish that they honestly knew the profit that comes from fellowship, communion, and a relationship with the Most High. The inner peace that allows us to lay down each night and sleep peacefully and confidently, knowing that God is on the throne, the joy that comes from serving and loving others, and the pure happiness and bliss that comes from knowing our sins have been forgiven. They are no longer held to our account. What a foolish question. What is the Almighty that we should serve him, and what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Oh, that they only knew what we know to be true, friends. We can't prove it. We can't explain it. It's better felt than told. But once felt and received, once our eyes are open and we surrender to the truth of the Lord Jesus, we experience the inner grace and the sweetness of his spirit, life will never be the same again. You see, on the outside, friends, it may appear that the wicked have received all their heart's desires, but they are empty on the inside. Yet we as his people have been filled with his spirit and waters, living waters, usher forth from us and through us. And we walk in the joy of the Lord each and every moment, each and every day. Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? But what a profit it is to us to gain our souls and lose this world. Hallelujah, friends. Well, I, I trust that you are learning what that really means, what the full implications are of that for your life. And that though you think you may have little, if you have Jesus, friends, you have much. Oh, may he bless your walk today. May your heart be full of his praise. May your mind be upon the things of his kingdom. And may the little effort that you make today change the world as you know it. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, with hallelujahs on our lips, I'll see you on the next video.